Uh, Professor Manchanda will have 12 minutes for the oration. We will have the first minute for the uh, formal words by the chair and the last one minute for the conferring of the oration citation <coughs> and the medallion. Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, Here. as this is an oration, we will not be having any questions from the floor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is really a great pleasure for me to bestow upon this oration to a very, very important person. A uh, very important person, none other than Dr. S.C. Manchanda, who is a pioneer in preventive cardiology in India. We feel very proud of it. This oration is bestowed upon in the name of late Shri Tara Devi Mittal, who was a great philanthropist from Delhi. We are very honored. I request Dr. IPS Kalra to join me to bestow upon this medallion on Dr. S.C. Manchanda. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Manchanda would be delivering the oration on lifestyle optimization, yoga and cardiovascular disease protection. To help him be on time, we have a time straight. Thank you very much, Professor Manchanda. I will request you to start with the proceeding of your session. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed an honor to deliver Taradevi Mittal oration. I think the subject is very particular to the audience because we are all here to learn spirituality and yoga is one of the simple methods of learning spirituality. It's also important because the, general, uh, the World Health Organization has accepted uh, International Day of Yoga on 21st. It has become an international technique. And I must tell you, there's a lot of now scientific data. I will try to summarize some of it today. Uh, you all know uh, that uh, the, uh, there are adverse effects of modern lifestyle, which have resulted in large amount of cardiovascular disease, other non-communicable diseases. The diet has become abnormal, uh, which is rich in fats, especially trans fats. The saturated fats and cholesterol are going to background. But salt and... Uh, uh, sugar and uh, low in fiber are important to cause heart disease. Mental stress, you heard a lot, it's increasing markedly. And uh, there's lack of exercise, tobacco consumption, and finally, environmental pollution, which is a big concern. And recently, I was attending the European Heart, and there were a large number of uh, concerns about this environment uh, pollution also. Because of this unhealthy lifestyle, a host of uh, uh, diseases have uh, started to occur in uh, increasing proportions. They have actually assumed uh, pandemic proportions, especially in the developing countries like hypertension, coronary artery disease, diabetes mellitus, cerebrovascular disease, obesity, psychoneurotic diseases, cancer, and large number of others. I'll not go into details. And this is the uh, WHO data from the ATLAS. You see that uh, in 2008, 64% uh, of the diseases are uh, related to uh, uh, non-communicable diseases and they have become the biggest killer of mankind all over the world. The communicable diseases are decreasing. This is true even in India where the uh, majority of uh, uh, the diseases are non-communicable. It was considered that these uh, heart disease and non-communicable disease are diseases of the richer nations. That's no more true. You can see that these are pandemic all over the world in Africa, India and uh, other developing countries have more brunt of this disease. So these are universal diseases. Actually, they start from the rich people and they go to the middle class and then the poor, actually. These are diseases of the poor people and they're very costly diseases. They are increasing in developing countries like India. You see the data here in the urban population from 60 to 95. It has increased five times in the rural population, one and a half times. So two things are clear. It's an urban phenomena where lifestyle is unhealthy and in the rural, it is much less common. Indians, for some reasons, are most prone to get this disease. You see on the left side, Indians have four times more disease as compared to Americans, the, uh, as Framingham Heart Studies, 10% roughly, whether they are in the United States, whether in Chennai or Delhi. And immigrants, Indian immigrants in Canada, England, Singapore, South Africa have the highest heart disease. For some reasons which are not very clear, uh, Indians are most prone. And uh, we have to spend a huge amount of money 236 billion dollars in 10 years according to the WHO. And we all know the risk factors for coronary heart disease, uh, diet which is related to dyslipidemia, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, you heard a lot, lack of exercise, mental stress, tobacco consumption. Yoga can control all these factors. Now what is yoga? 
Yoga you have heard a lot since morning. It's not a few postures, asanas, but a complete way of life. It's a practical, universal discipline, irrespective of culture, nationality, race, caste, creed, sex, age, and physical condition. That's why it's been accepted all over the world. It aims at harmonious development of the body, mind, leading to physical well-being, mental harmony, culminating into positive thinking, happiness, and peace. And that's why we coined a term called yoga lifestyle, which consists of four components. The physical, which consists of diet, a sattvic diet, low-fat vegetarian diet, physical exercise, no tobacco. Mental, very important part, that is uh, uh, through meditation we can avoid stress, a lot of data. Emotional well-being is the most important part because anger, ego, jealousy, hostility, you heard, you have been able to cause large number of diseases and positive emotions like compassion, love can decrease disease. And even the spiritual component is very important. More uh, uh, cardiologists are believing into it because uh, spirituality and uh, uh, certain mantras can uh, decrease the heart disease. So you would see this is the best method of achieving health because according to WHO, health is not mere absence of disease or infirmity but a state of physical, mental uh, and spiritual well-being. Now, there are so many types of yoga, one gets confused, but they are all derived from these ancient um, uh, scriptures. Uh, Acharya Patanjali described it as a step discipline, some uh, yam niyam, which are uh, personal and uh, social norms, some postures, uh, pranayama, how to breathe properly, how to control senses, how to concentrate, and how to meditate. And uh, many people have either concentrated on, say, uh, you, uh, asanas, for example, Ayangar Yoga, which is extremely good. Some people have concentrated most on uh, breathing control, uh, like uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Some have concentrated only on meditation. But the effects are similar whether you use one or all the three. So therefore, yoga is a holistic and intensive lifestyle modification consisting of stress management, healthy diet, regular physical exercise, and avoidance of tobacco. I call it a lifestyle polypill because it takes care of all the risk factors which cause heart disease like stress, diet, exercise and avoidance of tobacco. It is possibly the best lifestyle ever devised. Now, it has been claimed to be useful in many conditions like uh, psychoneurotic diseases, anxiety, depression. Actually, uh, it has been shown to be as effective in depression as the drugs without any side effects. And depression, you know, is one of the major uh, risk factors now. Recently, the American Heart says it should be considered as a major risk factor. It achieves mental peace and happiness, which all of us are trying to get since morning in bronchial asthma, physical fitness, irritable bowel, joint, but most important, the cardiovascular diseases. Now, cardiovascular diseases can be considered as a continuum. They start uh, with some risk factors like uh, 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 we all know that dyslipidemia and uh, hypertension, diabetes, smoking. Then these factors lead to oxidative stress, uh, neurohormonal changes, inflammation, atherosclerosis, myocardial ischemia, thrombosis, infarction, arrhythmias, then heart failure and ultimately death. Yoga has been shown to be effective almost at all steps and I will briefly review the evidence which is there. Now, the risk factors of uh, uh, coronary heart disease all have been shown to be affected by yoga. A large number of studies to show that hypertension could be controlled and uh, as I was telling uh, this morning, uh, even the uh, American Heart Association accepts this. Diabetes mellitus, large number of studies are there alone or in combination. Obesity, both type of obesity, central obesity as well as overall obesity, huge number of studies, dyslipidemia, independent of all other factors and very good for uh, smoking cessation and of course one of the best techniques for mental stress. And recently even American Heart Association has said, uh, this was published in circulation, that there is sufficient evidence to show that meditation can reduce blood pressure. They talk of transcendental meditation and therefore they suggest that this could be used as a non-pharmacological measure to control. We have done some studies uh, for reversal of heart disease and there are two types of heart diseases. One is early stage which can occur in metabolic syndrome. This is a very common condition in our country, central obesity, insulin resistance and uh, so on. And we did a study uh, uh, with yoga. It was a randomized control study. Uh, uh, 100 patients, uh, 50 uh, with yoga and 50 without that and you saw there was a regression of atherosclerosis as you see on the right side yoga caused a reduction of the uh, intimal medial thickness significantly and uh, indicating that early atherosclerosis could be reversed. In addition, there was a significant uh, reduction in the body mass index, the waist circumstance, HDL, LDL and systolic blood pressure. 
Others have shown that insulin resistance could also be affected. So, extremely good for metabolic syndrome, which is the precursor for uh, heart disease and diabetes, and very common in our country. This is a disease which is really affecting us, uh, the metabolic syndrome. Even in the advanced atherosclerosis, when the blockage is more than 70 or 80 percent, there are several studies. Three of them are remarkable. Dean Ornish published this in 95 years follow-up in 98. We did a study which was uh, for the first time more than 70 percent blocked. Dean Ornish had done 40 percent and then Dr. Gupta has done a very large study again in uh, more than 70 percent stenosis. The results are exactly same of all these studies. All the three studies show there is a marked change in the body mass index. The lipids are markedly raised. In our study, the LDL cholesterol, this is before the statin era, was reduced by 21 percent. Angina was significantly reduced. Uh, that's why we now we use it for the optimal medical management. There's regression which was seen, although regression was small, but uh, the symptoms were markedly reduced and the uh, events were markedly reduced. So, psychosocial status, of course, improved. And the compliance with the lifestyle was very important. I think we improved the willpower and that's why they followed what uh, uh, the exercise and the diet very, very closely. So we use this as one of the best methods uh, to make the mind strong so that they can follow the lifestyle. So lifestyle modification is not difficult, only thing you have to uh, make the mind strong. Then there is a study which uh, shows the outcomes. This is with a transcendental meditation, again published in circulation and uh, these are patients who were followed for about nine years, you can see uh, these are patients with myocardial infarction. They were followed for seven years. Uh, there's a control group which was followed by the conventional four drugs that we know of uh, after myocardial infarction and meditation was uh, added in the other group. And you see the transcendental meditation over seven years it caused a reduction of 48 percent, almost half of uh, 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 the primary endpoints of mortality, non-fatal MI or non-fatal stroke. So this shows that even outcomes can be changed by meditation. In cardiac rehabilitation, uh, it has also been uh, suggested to be used because it improves physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being. It reduces risk factors. It is ideally suitable and it is very cheap and simple method. We have started a very large study, the largest ever Indo-UK study involving 16 hospitals in India and four in UK and hopefully in two years we will have the results because uh, it appears that if it could be used, it could be a very cheap method. And this is universal. Patients are being uh, uh, brought in to the hospital, like this is one of the New York hospital. Two days before the bypass, some hospitals in India, All India Institute and some hospitals in uh, Bangalore are also doing it. They are brought in two days before bypass surgery and then they are uh, taught meditation before and after and the recovery is much quicker. A lot of publication is there. Yoga has also effect on arrhythmias and this is a a study which was published from the United States very recently in atrial fibrillation, which is a very difficult uh, disease to really treat. It was found that uh, the symptomatic atrial fibrillation and non-atrial fibrillation uh, episodes markedly reduce, both silent as well as. So this could be a, a significant use and uh, I will not go into details. The methodology has been that it balances the autonomic parasympathetic system. And it has also been used in ventricular arrhythmias and so on and so forth. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bernard mentioned several cases who were going for a cardiac uh, 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 ICD devices that by taking care of the psychosocial stress, the uh, ICD could also be wrong. Now, uh, yoga has effect uh, even in other conditions like uh, heart failure. And there are uh, small studies that show that uh, it can improve the quality of life. This is the last one, I think. Uh, it can, uh, uh, can I have the uh, last one? Yes, to conclude. Yoga is a holistic lifestyle, it's a lifestyle polypill. It's ideal for lifestyle optimization. Scientific research shows that yoga has preventive, promotive and therapeutic role in heart health. Risk factors for heart disease can all be controlled. It can even reverse heart disease, both early as well as advanced. It should be used as a simple cost-effective technique. Of course, we need still larger and uh, well-randomized studies to confirm it. But uh, because this is so cheap and without any side effects, I think it should be used for primary and secondary prevention. Many hospitals like ours have accepted this and we are using these patients after angioplasty and bypass. Thank you very much for your patience. I, <clears throat> I'm sure you all agree with me that for the theme of the conference, this is the right subject. And <clears throat> Dr. Manjanda has very nicely brought out all the points and uh, both 
three qu uh, quarter of my time is spent in in impressing upon my patients about the lifestyles. Dr. Manchanda had come from Australia in 1980s, early 80s, and I was his patient as angina. He did my angiography, and it was, uh, my circumference was 70% uh, blocked, so he advised me this lifestyle. In 1996, my, this angiography was, this coronary was clear, and doc, here I am, there, no, 80, 80 years, and Dr. Gupta has done a lot of work on this, uh, in, this uh, uh, in this institution, and uh, I think the lifestyle is the need of the day. I think excellent presentation by Dr. Manchanda. And over the last 18 years, I have seen that this, this yogic, yogic, yogic lifestyle is good even advanced heart disease, triple vessel disease, where the patients, you know, they have diffuse disease, long blocks, not amenable for bypass surgery, angioplasty. And we have been using this now for primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention, all the levels, the same way as Dr. Manchanda has told us. I think he needs a big hand. From Thank you very much. I think Thank you. let this we Thank close the Thank session. Thank you very much. Oration, no yeah. questions. We but Dr. Manchanda's presentation next. is the most outstanding presentation and we are feeling very proud that Dr. Manchanda is with us in India. Dr. Manchanda.